There's exciting news in the landscape and gardening world. The USDA has released their brand new 2023 USDA cold hardiness zone map. Our old map is from 2012, so we have 10 new years of data that we have collected that is included in the new map. Most of you have moved up one zone in your cold hardiness rating. In this video, I wanna go over how the new map affects you as a landscaper or a gardener, and also wanna talk about how the new map was made. Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Warren, and you're watching The Plant Doctor. Let's get started. So the new USDA cold hardiness zone map, here in a minute, we're gonna to go to the office and I'm gonna show you some of the interactive features. But one of the things I'm most excited about is the ability to have an actual interactive map. The 2012 map was not near as interactive as what we have with this new map. You can zoom into half mile increments with the brand new map, which means that you can zoom into your particular street address and see the cold hardiness zone for your particular area. With the old map, we had 8,000 weather stations that we collected data from. And with the new map, we have 13,412 stations. So we have over 5,000 new stations that we have collected data from, which makes the new map way more accurate than the previous map. So what is the USDA cold hardiness map? How do we create it? So the cold hardiness map looks at weather temperatures over a 30 year period. We're taking the minimal temperature from each year, so the cold extreme for each year, and we're gonna add those together. So for 30 years, so the new map is, goes from 1991 to 2020. So we've collected 30 years of data of the coldest temperature for each year, and we've added those up, divided by 30, we got an average, that gives us a number. And that number dictates what zone that you're gonna be in. Let's go to the office. I'm going to show you some of the interactive features. We're going to play with this new 2023 map. And at the end, I'm going to give you my professional opinion on the new map. This is the USDA zone cold hardiness map for 2023. You can see here on the right, you have your graph for zones one, which is negative uh, 55 to negative 60 degrees all the way down to zone 13B and that's gonna be 65 to 70 degrees. My area of the United States is in here and a lot of our viewers are in this area. So I'm gonna focus on this a little bit, but I am gonna talk about different areas of the country as well. So I want you to look at the new map here. The new map has a, a couple of different features that the old map does not have. So you can go up here, enter your zip code. I'm gonna enter a zip code that I used to live in. This is 35242 and this is going to be just south of Birmingham, Alabama. And you can see here, you can zoom all the way down to street level. So this is East Emerness Parkway. I used to live kind of off of this road here. And you can see there's actually a, a dividing line between zones, it looks like zone 8A and zone 8B here. And just knowing the topography of this land, uh, this ground sits a little bit higher than this ground and that's just enough to create a microclimate between the two. So you're getting way more detailed maps than we had with the 2012 map. Another thing I wanna show you guys is how far north some of these zones have shifted since the last map that we had in 2012. So this is the 2013 map. Let's look at the difference between zone 7B and 8 a and you can see here so zones 8a is going to be this light beige color that kind of runs along the southern boundary of tennessee along with uh, the boundary with mississippi alabama and georgia and kind of meanders its way over across arkansas into southern oklahoma if we look at the 2012 map you can see how much further down zone 7b went all right so it went it went more or less Atlanta, Birmingham, up towards Memphis, and then over to Little Rock. And then it more or less kind of bordered the Red River, which divides Texas and Oklahoma, and then kind of shifted southward towards El Paso. So that was kind of the area that was the line between 7B and 8A. If we look at the new map, you can see how far it shifted north. Okay, let's look at some other areas of the country. And one thing that kind of stuck out to me is this area here around Kansas. So this is the line between 6A and 5B. You can see here, Southern Nebraska is now 6A. 
If we look on the old map, the 2012 map, you can see that that's much further south. So we're, we're clearly below the Kansas state line on the 2012 map, and we've warmed up over the past 30 years to where that line has probably shifted. That's somewhere between, I don't have a scale on this map, but just knowing the distances of states and stuff, that's probably somewhere between 50 and 100 miles that that line has moved north. You can also see it up here in the Dakotas. If we look at the old map, you can see how much further south the purples go. So that's gonna be zone 4A, it looks like. That is solidly going down into South Dakota. On the new map, that's more in line with the border between North Dakota and South Dakota. And so here again, this is the, the new map. This is 2023, old map, 2012. Just look at the area of the country that you live in and just make an observation of the difference in the map. So my professional opinion on the map, and I also wanna talk about how we can accurately use this map to make you a better gardener or landscaper. I like the new map. They did an excellent job. It shows me what I've observed over the past 30 or so years. Um, I've been in the landscape industry since I was a kid, just behind a shovel, my dad's landscape crew, and then I worked at a golf course. I've been out here for a long time doing this stuff. And we get cold snaps, but they're not as cold as some of the cold snaps we saw in the 80s. If you go back in the 1980s in my area, we had some temperatures that got below zero. And though that data set is no longer a part of the map. And so the average temperatures have gone up a little bit. So we should be in 8A, where before we were in 7B. So how should you as a homeowner use the USDA cold hardiness map? And I, I think a lot of homeowners, uh, they get kind of confused with, okay, this plant's rated for zone eight. I should be able to plant it in zone eight. Well, yes and no. So remember that that is an average temperature over a 30 year span is going to get colder than the temperature for your USDA cold hardiness zone. So for example here, frost proof gardenia is a very popular plant. It's rated, I believe, for 8A, 7B. We're right on the line. We are very marginal for that plant here in my area. Last Christmas, we had a flash freeze where we went down to seven degrees. We had 50 mile an hour winds and I had homeowners calling me left and right. Dr. Warren, this died in my yard, that died in my yard. And a lot of it was gardenias. And so what, what we've got to understand is this. If the plant is marginal for your area, so it, in my area, I'm zone eight. If I have a zone eight plant, most years it's going to be okay. But occasionally we're gonna have a cold snap once every five to 10 years where we're gonna get below those temperatures significantly. So say zone eight is 10 to 15 degrees. That's our average lowest temperature over the last 30 years, we're gonna have some nights where we get down into the single digits. We'll get down to six, we'll get down to five degrees. Those marginal plants, they're gonna get burned back really hard or they're gonna die completely. So my recommendation is this. If you want a shrub or a tree that's going to live for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, if, take your USDA hardiness zone and lower it two zones. So for me, I'm 8A. If I want a plant that I know is going to survive the coldest of winters in my area, I want to look at a plant that can survive all the way up in like zone six. I'm giving myself a buffer there. And that's what I want you to understand that most years, those marginal plants in your area, they're going to be okay, but you are going to get a cold snap that's going to knock some of those back significantly. Guys, as always, thank you for watching The Plant Doctor. And until next time, happy gardening. Just in time. Let's get out of this rain, too. See you guys.